how to track your cycle. What is going to help you get pregnant the fastest? Hi friends, I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford. I'm a board certified OBGYN and fertility doctor. And today I wanna to talk about cycle tracking and what I want you to know. The reality is that this has changed over time, but tracking your cycle or being aware of when you're ovulating has been associated with an increase in fecundability. Fecundability is the probability of getting pregnant. So I'm gonna break down what these different options are and what the latest study has shown us about what is best to help you get pregnant the fastest. If you are a fan of learning more about your body and your fertility, please subscribe to the channel that is helping spread our message of fertility education to more people. All right, so in order to use an app or a fertility awareness method, you have to be able to track your cycles. The reality is if you are not ovulating, this is not for you. So number one, if you do not have regular periods, you have irregular periods, no idea when they are coming, you skip months at a time, please just stop the video and call your OBGYN or a fertility doctor. You need a greater assessment because it's really frustrating for me and I know for patients who are tracking their cycles for a long time and they're just never ovulating. Sometimes tracking your cycle can allow you to understand your period pattern is irregular. So sometimes you don't know until you watch or look, but if you know you don't have regular periods, just go see a doctor because you need to figure out why and you need something to help you ovulate. However, if you have regular periods or you've been on contraception and you think you have regular periods, but now you're stopping and you're trying to find out, this video is great for you. Understanding what happens in the cycle is going to help you understand the basic types of fertility awareness methods. When we talk about fertility awareness methods, those are things like BBT, basal body temperature, cervical mucus monitoring or CMM, or ovulation predictor tests, OPKs. Those are ways that you can use other tools to ascertain when you are ovulating. When you use an app, the app is using the calendar method. The calendar method is basically taking a calculation of the average person who ovulates about 14 days before their next period starts as the average kind of length of the luteal phase. So if you have 30 day cycles, the app will go 30 minus 14 and tell you that your ovulation day is on cycle day number 16. And then we know the fertile window is the five days before and then the day of ovulation. The egg only lives for 24 hours, so it's got to be fertilized by sperm in that time window. But sperm can live for up to five days in the female reproductive tract. So five days ending on day of ovulation. That's considered the fertile window. So that's what the app is gonna tell you. It's gonna say, okay, day 16 in this example is peak fertility day. The five days prior are high fertility days. And that's when it's gonna target that you go and have intercourse. So the app is using a calculation. In the old school days, we used a planner and I would have patients come in with like their cycles all tracked out on a planner. But now the app will do that for you. I have found so many people who thought their periods were regular until they use an app to track them. And then we find out there's actual irregularities in there. That being said, the nice thing about the app as compared to the paper planner is it's adjusting because you put in when your period starts. So if your period actually isn't 30 days apart, but it comes at day 26 and then 28, it's readjusting how long it thinks your luteal phase is and shortening and changing when that ovulation window is. So it is dynamic and that is an advantage. The bad thing about the app is it's data in, data out. It's only as good as the data you put into it. So if you're unaware of your cycle length and you just tap in 28 days, it's literally gonna calculate your fertile window based on that, even though that may not be accurate for you. So it's only as good as what you tell it. Another thing is there has been some concern recently about safety and privacy in apps, and I think that's just because of the current political world and abortion laws about could those apps share your personal data or be compelled to do so. I think you have to be aware of anything electronically going to a cloud potentially could be at risk. When you're ovulating, if we think through what happens naturally, what is going to happen is at the start of a cycle when you're on your period, the brain sends out FSH or follicle stimulating hormone. FSH is well named, it works to grow a follicle. A follicle is a fluid filled structure in which an egg lives in. As the egg gets more mature, the follicle grows. So FSH is well named. When the egg is mature, it's making more estrogen. And once it has peak estrogen levels of at least 200 picograms for 50 hours, that is the signal to the brain that there's a mature egg. 
And the brain will then send out a surge of LH or luteinizing hormone. And this surge will allow the follicle to rupture, the egg to be released, and the follicle reforms and starts making progesterone. Now LH, the same surge that caused you to ovulate is continued to be released throughout the entire luteal phase, just in pulses. And the corpus luteum responds to this and sends out progesterone in pulses throughout the entire luteal phase. If you are not pregnant, the corpus luteum can only live for 14 days. It then collapses, progesterone drops, and you have a period. If you get pregnant, that HCG from a pregnancy will stimulate more progesterone production. We like to say it saves the corpus luteum, and then you're able to continue with the pregnancy and you don't have a period. All of your fertility awareness methods are based on this. So calendar method or apps are based on the fact that the luteal phase is in 14 days for most people. When you use your other fertility-based methods, one of them is BBT or a basal body temperature. BBT is looking to see if you have a shift in your temperature and elevation that comes from progesterone production. This typically happens one to three days after you ovulate as progesterone starts to be made, you see an increase in your temp that should remain at a little higher level throughout the luteal phase. When you don't get pregnant, it can drop. When you don't see a shift, you start to worry that you did not in fact ovulate. Now, the good thing about BBT is it's pretty accurate if you have the right thermometer or the right tool. The bad thing is it can be kind of cumbersome. Modern technology has made it easier with wearables and other options. Back when I was training, people had to use like a mercury-based glass thermometer and use graph paper and it was very specific. But the worst thing about BBT is it's just a confirmation that you ovulated after the fact. It's not predictive. Like you can't go have intercourse at that moment and get pregnant as compared to cervical mucus monitoring and ovulation predictor kits. So cervical mucus monitoring or CMM is when you are checking your cervical mucus, not your vaginal discharge, your cervical mucus. So you are putting fingers inside, up as close to the cervix as you can get, grabbing, pulling out, stretching, and seeing what you get. And your type four cervical mucus is stretchy and egg white. And that is from the high estrogen levels, making that cervical mucus easier for the sperm to swim through. Otherwise, cervical mucus is a little hostile because it doesn't want to let things inside the uterus. So we're looking for that type 4 cervical mucus, usually comes from peak estrogen levels. That's usually considered day of ovulation. That's the day to target intercourse if you're checking cervical mucus. Note, fertility treatments are going to mess up your temperature, mess up your cervical mucus. Don't be tracking with those two if you're using fertility treatments. Now, OPKs or ovulation predictor kits are actually a urinary kit where you are measuring the LH surge. Remember, there is no LH really in the follicular phase. You get a surge before you ovulate and then it's going to go up and down in pulses throughout the entire luteal phase. So an ovulation predictor kit is only helpful if you can detect the start of LH being released. So what you need to do is use the test at least one time per day. I usually recommend 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. because the LH surge tends to start in the morning. It's released from the brain. It's got to get in the bloodstream, filtered through your kidneys, and be in your urine for you to be able to detect it on the urinary test. So if you're going to use an OPK, I usually recommend you start five days before you think you could ovulate. So if you usually think you have 28 day cycles, starting around day 14 is a pretty good bet. The same time every day. And the day you get a positive, which is going to be as dark or darker than the control line or positive on a digital test, that is the day of the surge, which is the day before ovulation. And the two best days to target intercourse are the day of the surge and the next day of ovulation. So both cervical mucus and OPKs can be helpful for timing intercourse in that cycle. Now, there was a study published in Human Reproduction in 2020, fecundability in relation to use of mobile computing apps to track the menstrual cycle. Now, this study was trying to look at, does an app help you? How does it compare to using other fertility awareness methods? And what is better? Now, importantly, this was used between 2013 to 2019. That's when the data was collected. So there's some more modern stuff now that wasn't available then. It is just a cohort, a prospective cohort, meaning people were enrolled and they watched to see what happens and then went and analyzed the data. Overall, it was looking at over 8,000 people who were trying to get pregnant. Over 70% of them were using an app to track their cycles when they entered into the study. The outcome of the study was fecundability or probability of a pregnancy test that was positive, not live birth or the ultimate outcome. Five apps in the study were designated to be selected apps, meaning the investigators looked and determined these were a little bit better. That was Clue, Fertility Friend, Glow, Kindara, and Ovia. 
But importantly, what did the study show? The study showed that using an app versus using nothing had a higher chance of getting pregnant. So using an app in general, you had a 20% higher chance of getting pregnant than if you didn't use an app. There was no difference in those selected apps versus other apps. So it probably doesn't matter which app you use. Apps were associated with a higher rate of getting pregnant than just using fertility awareness methods. However, the highest chance of getting pregnant was if you used an app and you used at least one other fertility awareness method, whether that's cervical mucus or OPK or BBT, the combination of an app plus a fertility awareness method had the highest rates of conception. Also notable in the study is people who used the apps tended to have more intercourse. And overall, we know that having intercourse in the fertile window is part of getting pregnant. So the take home message here is that understanding your cycle and tracking it in one way or another can be really helpful. Apps can be a great tool and it does not look like one app is better than another one. So pick one that you feel comfortable with. Overall, remember that when you use an app, data in is only as good as data out. So pay attention to that. And when you are looking at your different methods of fertility awareness, combining one of those, cervical mucus, basal body temp, or an OPK with the app is going to get you that highest level of fertility. Remember that if you are under age 35 and you've been trying to get pregnant for a year and you're not pregnant, that is infertility. If you're over age 35 and you've been trying for six months, that is infertility. And we recommend that you seek an evaluation with a fertility doctor like myself to make sure that there's nothing else preventing you from getting pregnant. Overall, hope this helped you just understand what is tracking your cycle and what may be the best. I appreciate you guys being here so much. Please subscribe to the channel. You can always learn more about your natural fertility if you want to join my community and the Enhance Your Natural Fertility course. You can also listen more on the As A Woman podcast or follow along on Instagram at Natalie Crawford MD. Thanks, friends.